Hi everyone, um, I'm Yamur Simshek and I am um, one of the SEO managers at Philip Morris International and looking after for the UK market only and um, obviously before that I, I was working in the agency side and I just switched in-house last summer. That's why actually it has been a challenging switch and then I have learned a lot and also I have uh, had some failures as well during the way. Um, Obviously, uh, as Mark mentioned, I also, I'm also the co-founder co of Global Cyber Security Network, which is like a B2B uh, website, uh, a directory for cyber security companies, and we are producing content for them, and also uh, obviously doing some partnerships and collaborations. So if you have any interest in, or do you know, if you know anyone in cyber security industry, we are doing free collabs and free partnerships as well. Just let me know. Uh, I'm also the founder of Search and Stuff events, meetups, and networking, um, uh, conferences etc so uh, this is a new thing new uh, community so if you want to get involved if you want to speak at the events just let me know uh, we are not that posh <laughs> but we are actually kind of trying to find um, different sponsors on different um, ideas for the event but hopefully we will find more in the near future um, and then pay uh, for the speakers etc etc so yeah um, let's start Obviously, my topic is a bit softer than um, the previous technical one, which was great. I learned a lot. Uh, thanks, Deb. And uh, this was is most like it's more likely um, for those who have just started using AI in their day-to-day uh, -day, uh, in-house content projects or in agencies, etc. Uh, it's just like uh, I'm just trying. I'm just going to try give some uh, insights on how we can actually approach this. Uh, projects if we are actually having some limitations or restrictions as well because as you as I mentioned uh, I'm also in the tobacco industry so we have regulations in UK and uh, obviously in-house we can't use AI uh, because of the data and privacy but uh, in my personal projects and my in my personal day-to-day -day communication I use AI for different stuff and different things so um, the current state of AI in content creation um, obviously, uh, we're going to mention about the challenges in traditional content creation and what AI means for content creation uh, in my way. Um, in, well, uh, before we talk, started talking about AI in content creation, uh, there were still some challenges in um, the traditional ways, uh, which are actually kind of sometimes lack of sources or uh, like some time sensitivity issues. Uh, or maybe the writer's block uh, and or like you know the criticism like some engagement problems or maybe the budget uh, as well and uh, many things that I can count and because I've been kind of working with copywriters in the past in different projects um, it's not an easy job for them it's not an easy job for us and our clients uh, obviously we had to consider a lot of things and a lot of processes so, um, and th there has been a discussion since AI became available <laughs> publicly that um, obviously people were thinking if AI is going to take over their jobs or not. So this has been a discussion for a while still in, in, the, uh, in the area. So um, that's why I'm going to, I wanted to share a few more insights on uh, how we can actually keep the budget, but kind of spread the budget or distribute the budget in different phases of content creation and still uh, get benefit from uh, copywriters or other skilled people, uh, people's skills uh, and experiences as well. So um, let's start with what AI means for content creation in my way. Um, obviously we have opportunities. Um, you know, no one can deny that uh, the, the efficiency may increase, uh, the creativity may increase in different ways because always different ways because obviously um, you may end up with finding a lot of ideas, but you may also end up with uh, trying to prove those ideas are creative or uh, haven't been tried before, etc. But this is your job after AI has done with its job. So um, I would say uh, there are like two ways on that. Uh, and also maybe personalization, you can actually uh, work on, with AI, you can actually work on creating different personas uh, for your different um, audience segment. And actually, you could also do it by yourself, but it can save you a lot of time on creating, um, for, for even like email campaigns, you can actually end up with creating a lot of groups and a lot of personalization, and then you can personalize those emails to, um, to considering them as well. 
and um, you can in improve the communication within your team and with your clients and also um, obviously with your uh, potential clients because um, again writing emails uh, creating contents, creating briefs, creating ideas are not easy job and sometimes time consuming and sometimes you end up with not, no client at all. Um, I think sometimes you can actually save some time and uh, maybe you can actually uh, get that client and Im improve from there if you see the kind of light in there. And obviously the data driven insight, this has been in the industry for ages so uh, it's still uh, on there, we, we can still use AI for data extraction, as Seb also mentioned, in different ways. Um, we can still rely on data, and we should still rely on data while we are making big decisions. And um, this, is, this hasn't changed at all. Uh, well, with all these opportunities, of course, they are available if you have a growth mindset, rather than, you know, um, if you stick to your old mindset, maybe uh, you could end up with doing nothing with AI or uh, you can en end up with uh, not catching the pace and you, you know uh, your competitors may have already done everything that you may uh, you might be able to do actually and um, but where are you in this one you can actually get information from AI uh, or like thanks to AI and you can do it easily and in a quicker way but um, obviously you are there still to kind of prove this information and also use this information for your own projects, own purposes, and also improve from there and get more advanced level of uh, work that you will be doing. So, of course, there are challenges. Uh, this is not only for content actually, but in, in different segments and industries as well. Um, there have been a lot of conversations and uh, discussions are going on in ethical and bias concerns. Um, obviously, it is also important that what kind of data you are feeding your AI like let's use chat GPT as an example like if you are feeding your prompt uh, in biased um, ways, uh, ways of your thinking uh, again still uh, you need to be careful on what input you're gonna output you're gonna get and then you need to review uh, carefully what you're actually going to share with your audience and um, loss of um, authenticity, which is actually, again, depends on you. You can get the information, you can get the content using AI, but uh, the last work is actually yours to make it unique, to make it appealing to your own audience, like uh, to make it creative or engaging. Um, obviously, intellectual property issues, and the more that we can count, but uh, tonight is not tonight. <laughs> uh, but actually, uh, this has been like on the news, um, and uh, apparently there hasn't been any solution um, made yet because uh, a law and regulations are also getting uh, updated uh, after AI has become uh, available publicly. Like um, little one of the uh, recent news saying patents on AI creations require significant human input. Uh, I mean, when you say significant, who's going to decide this and how? Uh, what is the criteria for significant human input? So all these things are not decided yet and that's uh, shared uh, publicly or uh, as formally so and officially. So that's why we are always up on the air and we are always like thinking what is right, what is wrong uh, on uh, different uh, copywriting, uh, copywriting issues too. So uh, what I'm meaning is that it's all in your hands at the moment that uh, to make the decision in a wise way uh, using AI basically. Um, so a refresh content strategy creation strategy and process. So um, considering all these things uh, in the past, considering the human touch, like we did have a content creation phase uh, before AI. Uh, what was it? Let's say like in a nutshell, top level, brainstorming, research and planning, um, content creation, review, revisions, editing, and um, some uh, and afterwards distribution of the content and also the per kind of monitoring the performance of your content that you create, either blog post or either con landing page category content or video content, etc. So uh, this was the initial way that we were doing, but after AI became, available, uh, we now have the collaboration with human and AI. So uh, now that AI has added, has been added to the uh, similar bullets, but still uh, we are, we need to be here as a human being, uh, 
to reveal the con if the content is actually uh, making sense, giving the right information, useful information, and also um, if you would want to share that content in your WhatsApp groups with your friends, in emails, etc., etc. So we are still there and we are still monitoring the performance, but we have just added AI to some different stages of content creation, which is actually helping us to save some time, effort, and then use those time and effort to create more creative stuff. So um, when it comes to in-house projects, obviously, um, after switching from agency to in-house life, uh, my life hasn't been perfect in the first uh, couple of months because um, when you were in the agency side, uh, when you have a SEO client, um, you have maybe one or two contacts that you can actually, uh, you, I mean, I, I used to be working at small agencies, maybe in global ones, um, maybe there were more contact points, but in my experience, I was actually um, having the brainstorming and telling the ideas and everything and the presentations to one or two per people. And then uh, they were coming up with more updates to us and there was like a middleman every time. And I didn't know what was going on in the background. Um, I had some assumptions, but obviously you never know without having the experience. Um, well, when I switched in-house, now that I have product teams, brand teams, uh, CX team, legal team, and also my managers in the digital activation team, etc., etc. So uh, you have to, um, if you have an idea in content projects, you have to go to one by one and kind of tell your idea in different styles and in different versions for those who would understand your idea in your way. Um, so when you just say SEO, not every people has to know SEO, but if you tell them in their way, uh, they may end up with uh, agreeing with you and then creating that content because it's not only your um, your decision to create content if you are in, a, in a maybe a bigger company. Uh, I also have my own startup, so I can try any idea that I have without any restriction or a limitation. But um, these things are kind of uh, in different um, perspectives. These things may challenge you uh, sometimes. So I wanted to give some tips for the journey for like. Um, if to create your own pro library, for example, or build your team for R&D and editing, we will come to the details later, and create your own GPT and actively check out new AI tools because a lot of AI tools have been um, coming to the uh, industries for years, but we have just been, some of us just been uh, became aware of those, let's say. Um, and then new tools are coming and then they are giving free versions, beta versions and maybe even lifetime accesses. So just try them out, test and if you really like them, maybe get the lifetime, you know, um, membership. So you will end, because I remember people from Istanbul that I used to work with that uh, they actually, in the back in time, they had been uh, using, um, I think it was on crawl and then they had like lifetime access and then after on crawl came became popular, it, obviously they didn't have to pay for it, etc. So just uh, look out for new tools and see some uh, uh, ideas. But let's start with create your own company uh, prop library tip. So um, it's actually uh, available. I mean, you need to know first what you need for your content projects and then start from there. Uh, this is just an example to, that you can actually get inspiration by a simple search in Google saying like, you know, uh, Pro library ex examples for, let's say, a content project, but if you have different projects, you can also search for them. And then you can see different um, websites already created some. Obviously, they also did for, they also did this for, um, to, to gain more traffic <laughs> in the area, but also some, some of them are actually re really useful in giving you ideas on how you can create your own prop library. When I say create your own prop library, it's not a big task. It's just like, it could be just a Google Sheet that you start with um, adding your um, repeating prompts so that you will not end up with writing them again and again and kind of uh, feeling overwhelmed with chat GPT. So there are, I, I have my own sheet, but since because, of, because I can't share data from my company, I just added the screenshot and the resource that I actually got the inspiration from. Um, it's actually like a Google Sheet, very simple. It's, it is requiring your manual input, uh, but at the end of the day, after you start uh, adding the input and data, uh, you will see that um, you actually have um, 
a really great resource for yourself. And if you bookmark it, and whenever you need some prompt uh, that you can use on ChatGPT, you can actually just open that op Google Sheet. You can just fill the blanks, and then you can just you know copy and paste to ChatGPT and use it if you have repeated tasks during the day. Because if you're in house, I can imagine that you have repeated tasks. And I am not doing SEO sometimes, I'm just doing project management or content management or account management. So I think this is really important that um, you can even use this for your email templates because I'm doing it uh, and it's really helpful. And we will share the slides, I guess, later. So uh, because I've seen some people are taking pictures, so I can also share later with the link. And um, yeah, create your own GPT. Again, this is not a big task. This doesn't require any uh, coding or any um, additional support. You can actually go to ChatGPT and uh, click on Create GPT and then uh, start ma having the conversation with GPT and telling it what you really want. In this example, for example, uh, I want I I came up with some ideas for landing page content. Okay. So, but I need to tell my ideas to different departments in different versions. And this, is, this has been repeating for a while. So what I did was actually created my own GPT for landing page content projects so that I can actually, when I have an idea and when I have the data and everything ready, I can actually uh, go to my tool, uh, add my inputs, and then uh, it, can it can bring me some email templates to share with different um, teams like from product team or from for even my for side projects even for investors I can actually send them okay I have this idea but in their ways and in their language and tone of voice uh, I can also ask for um, you know the, the the budget for that landing page because the landing page would require a creating a tool inside or a graphic design or uh, additional infographs or visuals because um, well uh, a, so generative experience is coming soon and we need to give people a, a reason to click on the content they have seen on the Google results. Otherwise they will just end up with having the information there and that's it. So um, I just wanted to give you a few examples. I know it's really hard to re read from that but um, I can also share the slides later. But just to give you a bit brief after that GPT creation, these are the uh, email templates that I can receive for a really easy uh, search uh, or idea and actually before you go deeper with your idea and then it will get rejected in like six months because uh, these projects uh, takes time in-house okay in especially for corporate life um, so what I started doing is that if I have an idea I'm gonna have this brief I will provide the data of course and then if it will kind of um, bring some positive uh, insights from different teams, I may start going deeper uh, uh, and then bringing more data, bringing more ideas to um, support that idea and then maybe end up with really having a good landing page and um, kind of a case study in-house. So um, I would suggest doing this uh, for your own projects as well if you are repeating these kind of things inside and um, if you have restrictions especially in different platforms. So the other thing would be building your team for R&D and editing process. So in the beginning when we were talking about if AI is get a kind of a replacement for copywriters, it is not. But uh, I will give some examples from a project that I'm doing with my uh, friend who is also the co-founder of Global Cyber Security Network. Um, we are actually doing this uh, in a different way. So we used to have a budget for let's say I'm just making the numbers up for five copywriters. We are now maybe having two copywriters, but we are also having three more other people uh, who is actually editing the content or who is actually doing the R&D for the content data and information that we're going to provide to the copywriters. So we are not actually ending up with uh, ending the relationship or the contract with the copywriters, but we are still giving opportunity to other people who have um, maybe uh, different ideas or skills for different uh, purposes and also balancing this um, on the way. Um, these, 
when, we, when it comes to like um, copyright and AI, creation, AI collaboration, um, we are in this stage after you know um, talking about uh, collaborative synergy and uh, the cost and budget, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So now we have oriented AI content creators, and there might my, my, there may be some more uh, position open positions for different roles and different uh, purposes in the future. So AI just helps with peop helps people also to realize what their strength and maybe uh, in the past uh, they were not even considering themselves in the content projects but maybe now they are able to actually provide different insights and different um, different tools so uh, it's all like about being in the keeping the balance like if you don't want to work with copywriters i wouldn't say it's a great idea but i wouldn't say also it's not a uh, it's the best um, it's not a good idea etc so it's like um, it's about your expectations, it's about your KPI, and it's about your um, goals with the content, basically. And uh, with that one, we, we kind of find the balance, we kind of uh, created our own R&D team and editing process. Because uh, just to give you an example, we, um, the startup that I'm also, um, the cybersecurity startup is not actually uh, started as a, um, a profit uh, oriented startup, so we started from scratch and then still uh, learning and still improving it. But uh, we are also um, spending budget for um, different projects, and we are also collaborating with different uh, audiences, different uh, segments of um, mm. editors. So, for example, um, we for different phases of content, like listing articles or in-depth content expert pieces, because. We are a cybersecurity platform. We need to create a really good and informative and uh, accurate content, basically. And we have our directory <laughs> pages. We have our guides and how-tos. Um, sorry, I, I kind of uh, passed. <laughs> it's coming soon. Um, so we, we have all these kind of stages for content projects. But what we are doing is actually, uh, for example, for listing articles, we know it's actually very, very um, uh, easy to get it. Uh, with chat GPT, we can still have uh, our R&D team for, to review the content. For example, um, top uh, cybersecurity conferences you can uh, attend in 2024. Uh, we are actually started, we have started creating our prompts. If we didn't like our prompts, we actually uh, use different uh, tools that actually make your prompt better, uh, as kind of considering the things that you want to achieve. So, um, and then we go back and then we kind of create our list of conferences and our R&D team, who, is actu who are actually the uni students at the moment, we are giving the internship. So they are actually going back and then searching the data and uh, approving the accuracy of the information and then they are coming up and then uh, we are kind of ending up with having the intro and conclusion with ChatGPT. And again, we are reviewing the uh, content and since we already have the Google Sheet, why not to provide a free Google Sheet within the listing article? So we will make, we will give people a reason to click on the uh, search result when they see on in Google search results, and then we, they can also make a copy, etc. So it's another example export articles process. So with this one, we don't go to ChatGPT or we don't go to AI. We just find the balance because uh, we work with uh, experts in their fields, like from Microsoft or whatever, and then we create the content together. We add the touch, like saying, this is not a ChatGPT content because we actually uh, research the kind of industry reports, trends. We added the years of experience uh, uh, touch on for EAT, etc. So we kind of um, we kind of find the balance in our content using ChatGPT or using real authors or um, getting a support from our editors, etc. So, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I've been rushing the, the last minutes, but I'm not the native speaker, so I think I had the uh, chance to have more, two more minutes, right? <laughs> Thank you.